um, this chapter linear law or what we call the application of a straight line graph. Basically, why do we call it an application? Because we are going to make use of gradient. We are going to make use of straight line gradient. And we are going to make use of the intercept, the y-intercept to calculate some unknown. So usually there will be two unknown in the question. So typically A and B. So because the objective is to calculate the unknown by using the gradient and intercept. So we usually would want to hide the unknown in the gradient and intercept. So um, later on, you will be seeing like nonlinear equation or logarithm equation, which you're supposed to reduce. So the, the idea of reducing is to linearize. And if you take a look, right, um, I'm using capital letter Y. So the capital letter Y can be a function of X and Y. So it can be a mix of X together with Y. Okay, later on, we'll talk more about it. So capital letter X also can be a function of X or Y. So where else the unknown right has to be hidden in the gradient and the intercept. So the gradient must contain the unknown. The intercept must contain the unknown. So that is the main idea. You got to bear this in mind. Otherwise, you find that yourself getting lost for the whole topic. Okay, so very simple idea. Okay, so I'm going to show a couple of examples before drawing. Okay, so if let's say you look at this equation, xy equal to a plus bx. Obviously, that's not a straight line because a straight line will be mx plus c format. So that is not a straight line. So how can I linearize it? So if you take a look here, so how can I linearize it? I can take it as it is. And maybe I just reshuffle a little bit. And then this part here will be your capital Y. This part here will be your capital X. And you are using your gradient to find B. And you are using your intercept to find A. So if you take a look, I can use my intercept to find A. I can use my gradient to find B. And my axis is X, Y. My X is still my normal X. So what does that mean? How does your graph look like? So your graph is, will be having this kind of axis. And your graph must produce a straight line. So your graph must produce a straight line. And where it cuts, that will be the value of A. And you use two points to calculate gradient. And that should be the value of B. So when you do this topic, when you draw graph, you must make sure your graph cut at the vertical axis. If you don't cut at the vertical axis, uh, you cannot use the y-intercept to find certain values. And usually, right, people who don't cut their, who, whose graph don't cut the y-axis, is just telling your teacher that you have very bad concept. You don't even know what are you doing. So we are utilizing gradient and intercept to calculate two unknown that will be found in a given equation. So that is one way of doing it. So I, there's another way of doing, uh, handling this equation. So another way will be something like, okay, I'm going to use the same equation. I can divide by x throughout. So what happened when I divide by x throughout?
So if you look carefully, this would have been my capital Y. This will be my capital X. This will be my gradient. This will be my intercept. So meaning, all right, this time around, my graph will be a bit different. My graph will be having this axis. And my gradient is helping me to find A. My intercept is helping me to find B. So it's actually the other way around. But will you still get the same answer, right? Yeah, you will still get the same answer. So maybe for this one, you are getting something like this. Then this will be your B. And then you get two points. The gradient is going to tell you A. So will you be able to choose how you want to plot? If the question never specify the, the capital X or Y variable, then yes. If the question specified, then you've got to go according to what the question specified. Okay, so, and not every time you might have two ways of linearizing. So this is just a question where you, there's two ways of doing it and you will be getting the same values for A and B, no matter which way you do. So here is another function that is obviously a cubic function. So a cubic function, if you go and draw it up, you will never get a straight line unless you linearize it. So how are we going to linearize it? So I'm going to divide by x cubed. Or if you want to, you can divide by x squared. Both will be okay. I think it's easier if I divide by x squared. Because if I divide by x squared, I would have gotten this. I would have gotten this and I would have gotten this. And it will be very straightforward that this is your capital Y. This is your capital X. And the gradient is going to help you to find the, the value of A. The y-intercept will help you to find the value of C. So I'm going to be using the y-intercept to find the value of B. The gradient will help you to find the value of A. And my axis will be like this. So please write your alphabet clearly, small letter X, small letter Y, big letter X, big letter Y. So what does that mean, right? So it means now I'm going to plot. So later on, how I'm going to plot that, later on I'll show you. So just understand that right now, your axis will not be your usual axis. So when you got this, you will have a y-intercept. The y-intercept represent B. Choose two point and the gradient is representing A. So we use the gradient to find an unknown. We use a y-intercept to find an unknown. So in order to do that, you've got to linearize it if you don't see a straight line function. So that's the feature of straight line function that we can have a constant gradient and a y-intercept. Okay, another example will be the one that involves log. How do you know it involves log? You will realize that there is an unknown in the power of x. So in this case, right, you are to going to use log. Either you are going to use common log or you're going to use a natural log. Doesn't matter. It will be the same. So in this situation, right, the linearization, you've got to use your log rule to linearize. So I'm going to introduce log on both sides. Okay, so, so either way, so if I introduce log on both sides or I introduce log on both sides, I'm getting exactly the same thing. Okay, so like now, 
Okay, I'm gonna introduce LG on both sides. If your logarithm is not strong, you will get a bit confused. Okay, so when you introduce LG on both sides, you should recognize that this is a product. A multiplied by XB. My B looks a little bit like six. So do you remember there's a law for the product? So if that is a product, you will be doing a lot plus lot. So first of all, you got to recognize that that is a product so that you can do a lot plus lot. And of course, you must recognize that the power B belongs to X. The B doesn't belong to AX. So it's not the same as this. Then the power belongs to this whole thing. But when we write it without bracket, it, it meant a different thing. That means right now, it belongs to X only. So that's the current situation. So then remember there's a rule number five that allow us to bring down the power. So if I do this, I already linearize. So let's organize it properly. So organize it properly so that you can see your capital Y, capital X, and the gradient is helping you to find B. It's all about getting the gradient to help you to find something. And then it's all about getting the intercept to help you to find something. So which means, right, if you have drawn it out and you're gonna get a nice straight line, So let's say this value, okay, I'm just doing a generic one. So let's say it happens to cut at two and two should be represented by log A. So this log A, you got to do a little bit of log, it's base 10. So A is something like 100. So you use gradient to find the value of A, but the gradient represent log A. So you got to go through a little bit of log. So most of the time, right, you've got to lock both sides or long both sides. Okay, so there are some tricky questions that involve lock and long. So whatever you do, you are supposed to linearize, you're supposed to flatten the graph so that your gradient is useful to tell you a specific value, so that your intercept is useful to tell you a specific value. But there are times, right, where your gradient and intercept may end up doing a simultaneous. Okay, like a situation like something like this. So if let's say the gradient is helping you to find A over B, and then the intercept helps you to find A squared. So it's a bit like simultaneous. You got to find A first, then put your A here to find B. So later on, you that, that could be some of the thing that um, you, you need to take note. So that is the basic idea first. The three different, I'm um, using, okay, my previous part is being erased. So please scroll back and make sure you have copied them. So just remember the whole idea is the gradient must help you to calculate a value of unknown. Intercept must also tell you, uh, get you to help you with another unknown. 